three committee meeting of this Monday, April the 24th. And um, can we please have, um, well, let's start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Mr. Aristide? Yes. Ms. Cobo? Here. Ms. Cohen? Here. Mr. Each? Present. Ms. Estime Irvin is trying to come, but she had a, a conflict, so she might come. Ms. Geimer? Here. Mr. McDermott? Present. Dr. Millian? Here. Dr. Moyes had confirmed, so he might come. Okay. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Robillard? Here. Mr. Sanchez? Present. We have quorum. Okay, so um, shall we jump right into yes. agenda item number one? Yes. Um, first of all, thank you very much for allowing us to have this special CRA advisory committee. Um, and I think Mr. McDermott had shared the sense of urgency and the reason why we're doing this in the email, but just for the general public for them to understand. Because of the elections um, in, in May, our regularly scheduled meeting is, is canceled. So the normal advisory committee meeting has been pushed to May 15th and the CRA board meeting on May 23rd. This applicant that we're going to review today, Alaska Coffee Roasting, is requesting for a grant to help her in, um, she was a victim of a fire um, April 1st. Um, it devastated um, the whole property and, and as you can see, I've attached several pictures um, for you to see. Uh, one of the challenges she had was, unfortunately, the fire department did not arrive in a timely manner. They, they took about 40 minutes, as I've been told. So imagine the, the, the damage of something that happened where the police had come right away versus a fire that was burning for a long time. Um, we met, um, staff met with Miss Karen, <laughs> can't say her last name, Tuvia. Tuvia. I, I thought I was going to massacre it. Um, so ever since the fire, she's been working on um, repairing it and so on, and she's been dealing with her insurance company and try to get the business back. Um, first of all, our CRA attorney is not able to make it because he does have a conflict for right. today and he couldn't come, but he did review the packet and I will mention his comments for you um, afterwards. Um, as you can see in the pictures, um, ev everything was devastated, even the, the food products, smoke, damage, and, and so on and so forth. And she has 22 employees, of which 16 of them are North Miami residents. As we speak, they are without a job, without a paycheck. And this happened April 1st. Um, she has been working with her insurance company to help her with um, the, the payments. However, the insurance does not cover a lot. Um, what I did on the cover page of the, for the cover memo, at the bottom you'll see a spreadsheet where it says construction costs, insurance mm -hmm. coverage, the difference, and the CRA grant request and other funds. So the total cost of repair and construction to get her back up and running, let's say at the end, by the end of this month, would be 629746 She has already started the work, so nothing, none of the work that she's already started we can touch <coughs> as you know because we do not do retroactive approvals. The insurance covers 300000 in construction and 50000 in equipment and food. That is it, unfortunately. There's a difference of 279746 her original request, believe it or not, was for the 80000 However, based on my professional assessment, if 80000 does not make an impact and will not help her open, it would not be an appropriate recommendation for us to make to help this business because our investment would go for naught. Um, so I discussed this with the city manager and I recommended that we approve a waiver of the 80000 request and also a waiver of equipment. As you know, our guidelines prevent us from funding equipment. We're not talking about the microwave, we're talking about the large scale equipment that she would need in the, in the, for, her, for her business. Um, so what I proposed was 174,000 in construction and 25,000 in equipment for a total of 199,000. Ms. Truvia is aware that the difference, there's a difference of 80,746 based on the estimate. There, it could be more depending on how you know, she's going through the process she is responsible for. 
Um, you know, Mike, I've never had to deal with a fire, so I can't tell you. I've only done rehabs for, you know, existing properties and so on. I, I can't explain to you what the damages are, but when I looked at the pictures, you see people having to wear masks, you have smoke everywhere. It's a pretty much a full on new, pack, you know, project. Ms. Tuvia is here if you have any questions. Uh, yes, Mr. One last, qu one last comment. Uh, the attorney, uh, Mr. Zelkowitz's comments were, what is the insurance covering? You know, that was his first point. He wanted to make sure that whatever the insurance is covering, we're not covering, and to make sure that whatever work was done before, we're not covering. And we went through the process with Ms. Tuvia and her contractor is there. So what we're proposing is the new work from, the finished work from the time that we approve it, which is the CRA board tomorrow, to finish up the work. Um, the insurance, like I said, is only covering 350,000. How much? 300 for construction and 50,000 for equipment and food yeah. items. Okay, and and that is that is it. Okay. Um, she oh, okay. has also attached a letter with her application detailing the the issues and you know she has like I said 22 employees, 16 of them are North Miami residents. She also works very closely with Johnson and Wales, provides internships and teaching on roasting classes. So she provides an additional c benefit to the community, which right now she's not able to provide. Okay. Yes. The total estimated cost of the project is 629746 so 554. Not, the, not, not the complete balance. There's still an $80,000 difference There's that she's taking care of. There's an $80,000 shortfall. Even that even she will with, take care of. Even if we vote Ms. to Tuvia, approve, it's still $80,000 short. You want to just introduce yourself? And introduce yourself. And Hi, my name is Karen Tuvia. I'm with Alaska Coffee Roasting. Florida LLC. Hmm? Um, April 1st, we had a devastating fire. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm an idiot. I don't have enough insurance. Will I do that again? No, never again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing everything I can to get reopened. I think we were on a really good trend. We've always volunteered with the, with the community. We do the bike community bike ride. Right. We were doing the police associate. Uh, um, I don't know. We do any, any event you guys ask us for. We're always there. And we want, you know, we're a neighborhood store. That's all we have ever wanted to be. Um, this is pretty devastating. Uh, for us to come in there, it took 45 minutes for the fire trucks to come. They were over in Keystone wandering around. Somebody sent them <laughs> to Keystone, uh, Biscayne Bay Drive. Um, I watched them drive by and I was out in the street at four o'clock in the morning screaming. Um, and from four to 4.45, I kind of watched the smoke billow and get worse. Um, we had a lot of smoke damage consequence we found out after that we've also lost two air conditioning units you know I mean it's it's one thing after another again all the technical I have my builder Alan's been you know with me for the cleanup and I will continue with him because I feel comfortable with him his quote is right about the same as the others actually cheaper than the, the third guy and and I feel comfortable with him because he's been doing my cleanup along the way and cleanup ate a lot of the money <laughs> you know the insurance I'm stupid I never in a million years would I have guessed something like this could happen. And uh, ignorance is no excuse, but I'm sad to say how, I'm. How did you not have enough insurance? I don't understand. I should, I, it cost me almost a million dollars to build the store. I should have had 650,000 to a million dollars coverage. I'm an idiot. And it, you just had, uh, you said 300,000? 300, 300,000 and 50 for, I, I just, I'm in, I don't know. I, I can't even. Five years. I've been here five years. Mm -hmm. And granted, it was a struggle when we first opened. You know, we had that street. And uh, two weeks after I opened, y'all took my street away. So, you know, my first <laughs> four years <laughs> so were right like a hell of a struggle to finally get our name out there. You know, we've just won awards for best coffee in the state of Florida. And we were the top 12 in the state, not, you know, Miami, the state. So we were working really, really hard. We pride ourselves on everything is made in-house. We're a community-based business that employs people within the community. Everything is made from scratch and everything is done with a passion and love. Mm -hmm. And my baby burned. Okay. Uh, spontaneous combustion of kitchen towels. What happened? Spontaneous combustion of Rats. kitchen towels. 
Now, I will for future have a galvanized steel bin for my towel. Um, I, I've done a lot of research since, and evidently it's very common. I had a fire. What am I going to say? Same thing? Never heard of such a, I, I'm sorry. I never in never 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 my wildest either. dream would you I have imagined the, this. The towel rag. The towel. Oh, say that. I'm sorry. I, I didn't really Spontaneous mean. combustion Spontaneous of combustion. my kitchen towels. Of kitchen towels. Clean because kitchen the towels, mind you. Okay, we wash them where, three times. Okay, at? we wash them three times a day. We do the laundry. We do the same thing. Twenty-five years in Alaska, five years here in Florida. I've always done the same thing. The rags are then placed in a bin once they're clean. Somehow, static electricity, and maybe a little bit of residual oil on a towel, causes spontaneous combustion. And, you and took out my whole, no, it happened 4 o'clock in the morning. If I was there, I would have smelled okay, something. Okay, well, you, well, you said that you were screaming, you were there. And no, at 4 o'clock in the morning, I was there when the alarm went off. And okay. they called me and told me, I came to the store, I met the police there. The police had called the fire. Fire I went to the wrong ago. place. Yeah. The, oh, the police were there in the fire. Police and I were there waiting for the fire trucks. Going, hello, hello, we watched them drive by. <laughs> oh, gee. Not a happy thing. No. Uh, does anybody yeah. have any yeah. questions? Yes, I do yeah. have a few questions, actually. I, 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 I understand uh, technically, based on uh, the business owner's assessment, there was not enough insurance on there. What's to say after we do this, uh, the same thing won't happen again? And could there be, in this particular instance, a requirement that uh, if this is approved, that the business owner maintain proper coverage for this business going forward? I don't have a problem with that. Because I would never do this again. So <laughs> not the, the, this stupid. the advisory committee today, whatever recommendation you make, we take it to the CRA board, and it can be part of the stipulation as part of the agreement. Yeah, it could be a contingent. In the Correct. agreement that, she, you know, within a certain time frame after the rehab is done and she's reopened, she acquires appropriate insurance to cover the cost, cover of, the cost. Of, of the total cost of the rehab. And then the other question I think I have in this is, uh, apparently we... Uh, the CRA team or your office increase it from the 80 to, so that we make sure she can open right away. Where's no, it's not so she can open right away. 80000 is not going to make a difference on the, she would still be short so much money that she may not be able to open. Okay. And as of, right, as of right now, where's the other 80 coming from? Is this She's still going to happen yes. within the time that we're? I'm already, I've yeah. already pulled 30 and I've got the others She's in using the work. Her own personal I'm using all my personal funds. I was selling my life insurance. Yeah. Whatever I have to do, I need to get my store open. I need to get my employees back to work. What's the other question? Uh, I think these were, these were the two main things for me in terms of, you know, uh, once, if we approve this, how do we make sure that this does not happen again? Uh, in terms of having proper insurance and then where you are with the process and if this approved to get the other 80, that keeps it moving. And that is one of the reasons why we made the recommendation to increase it, to waive the 80,000 requirement because it would have been an undue hardship for her to find the, the a larger difference. This was based on the conversation that we had, that what she was doing, she was going to be able to attain the difference. Whereas the flip side, she wouldn't have, you know, it would have been too much. Um, Any other questions? A comment. Um, if we do, I think at some point we may end, we, CRA, will be doing like small business training. Mm -hmm. Some kind, I think uh, actually a little insurance left for me to, to just to point out this kind of situation is very, very poor. Because I had. I wish somebody did it to me. I, I know, exactly. I had a, I had a, 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 <coughs> a small business that, that had a fire, not, not of this magnitude. But it knocked them out for several months. They had insurance to cover the fire, but they did not have um, uh, ongoing uh, uh, ongoing uh, business, business, uh, business insurance. Business insurance, insurance yeah. right? And it, you know, they had a big, they had a, they had a big, they had a big nut. And uh, I mean, I, I worked with them, but it was really, really difficult. And I said, why didn't you have business ongoing business insurance? They said, well, we got a good deal on a policy. Well, no, not such a good deal because you they you know they stripped out this little amount to make it a little bit cheaper and they could have they could have been just fine but they were really 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 hard for them as as part of the contingency that you may request because usually there are what you call proper professional do risk assessment mm -hmm. for the type of business for what's appropriate or whatnot right. you probably should consider having 
a more detailed, comprehensive re uh, uh, proposal, and whether they accept to to mitigate that risk is, will be up to them. But I think that's something we should consider. Uh, make sure we comprehensively look, looked at it to make sure the proper insurance are are in place in this particular case. At least have some sort of way to at least advise our our, uh, well, you our know grantees that. Insurance. Yeah, but we have a, we have a risk management department here in the city, and they can do they can do that. Well, that's for the city. We're talking about. No, I'm saying not that enough they for them to provide a course or a uh, service uh, uh, to uh, our uh, grantee. Right. As because we we do we are self insured as a city, and we have a department that takes care and anal analyzes risk. Right. So. So they could analyze that for us. For for them, I see what you're saying. I have it here. Just if we can. That's just a little bit of knowledge goes such a long way with insurance. Not only with insurance, you would know but uh, talking about businesses, people that go in business for the first time, I think the city should have a mandatory type of, you know, class or something to make them aware of everything that they need so that they don't fail. Because sometimes you spend your hard-earned money for it and you save for years, and within a year you close your door because you don't know all that is needed. So you're, you're kind of segueing into another item, so I want to uh, say on to this, but I, I think I mentioned before, and I know Mr. Rivera answered, but we do have quorum, so okay. if you do go, okay. thank you so much for coming, because I was like, I need quorum. Um, we are looking at retention um, and capacity building grants for existing small business owners who, are, who have been already in the city to help them with insurance, and there are some mandatory business classes that they have to take. Um, before they have access the, the other part of the grant. It's not a facade grant, it's not a rehab grant, it's you've been here, we're gonna help you get to that next level. It could be you need some accounting help, you can be, need some marketing help, but before you go through that process, you gotta go through two mandatory small business training for mm -hmm. you to understand what it is that, that you're doing. But we're not, I'm gonna bring the guidelines to you guys, I think in June. I don't want to like make any promises, but I don't want to, you know, dilute the, the, no, the issue right. with, with, but she, with but here. She, what happened to her is really terrible, yeah. and it would be yeah. good if we could, we could keep it happening to someone else. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Gaima? When is the estimated time of putting everything back together? The sooner I get an okay on this, the sooner I move ahead on everything else. How long? Contractor? Um, you have to get on the mic. Hi, Alan Eggert, Ace Construction. Um, probably about two to two and a half weeks from approval. So we're on schedule to open, if we can come up with the funds to do it, in about two and a half weeks. Oh, that'd be good. There, there's a lot of work being done that's outside of that scope that's mm -hmm. covered by the funds that are coming from the insurance sure. company. Yeah. Okay. There's several items that aren't in the okay. scope. No, but that's the reason why we're having the meeting. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I, I think that you know, Alaska Coffee's been there for what, five I years. Five, five years. And, a half. and, and November you certainly are. A, you certainly are a focal point for the neighborhood and an important business. They're still coming every day, so that yeah. makes me feel good. Uh, yeah, just exactly. to give me a hug, and I'm there every day. Uh, you can always good. find me there. Um, if there aren't any more questions, can we entertain a motion? I have a couple of things. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. You don't mind. Um, luckily, she's in the CRA district. She was across the street, she wouldn't be here. Okay. What kind of a message are we sending out there to the people that we have already funded? I think you just brought it up. Are they going to be insured? Are we, you know, we have an investment. If we give a, a grant for 80 grand, mm -hmm. and that place has uh, an act of uh, destruction of some sort, fire, what have you, right. how do we recoup? Right. Secondly, we, we've made grants to homeowners get them started. Of course, yeah. How about their properties? Are they going to be properly insured? And let's say one of those properties has a fire. Are we setting a precedent here that, uh, hey, you have a fire in your house, you come over here and the CRA is going to pay it? I, uh, I have some property within the district. I got to fight like hell with the insurance company. And it's coming out of my pocket to pay for the difference. Can I go to the CRA and say, hey, uh, it's my life's work here. Can you help me up with a couple of dollars? 
I, I mean, these, these are things that we have, I, I sympathize with you. I, I know the business that you, you, you know, how you work so hard over there for five and a half years. We've got to ask ourselves these questions. I mean, th these are, you know, uh, how, how, what's our next step? It's just right. Hey, I sympathize with you. I like you. I want you to do well. I, I, this is, uh, but is this the obligation of the CRA? Let's say that uh, restaurant right that we just funded across the street here, the, uh, the, the French Bristo. Let's say that goes up in flames, and that person doesn't have enough insurance. Well, so why, well let me finish. Uh, uh, do do we, we go over there and we fund the difference? Or uh, Mocha Cafe or one of the others? We've got to make sure that they have the insurance, number one, when we write these grants. But are we the Small Business Administration? You know, wh where do we go? Where do we draw the line? What's the next catastrophic, ev catastrophic event that will come across this board, and how do we decide that? Well, you know, may maybe, maybe going forward, this is a recommendation that any time we get a grant to anybody, that they be properly insured to protect the the, the CRA money. Okay, but now. She started her business. She didn't. She didn't get a grant from the CRA. Right. She correct. Put her life savings into it. Right. Now she's coming to the CRA. Well, do we look at this as an improvement grant? How would we look at this? How would we? We gotta have some kind of a, a smooth way of explaining this to our citizenry that we are not the insurance company and that we are doing this objectively. Is there a, like, let's say the building became, um, 10 years, she needed to improve the store and she came to the CRA for a grant. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But how do you explain this so to the citizen? I, 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 do I they say that we're a fire? Do we say, okay, well, she's got tw 19, uh, 19, 19 employees over there that are residents of the city that need a job? And is this an economic way of doing it? I, I mean, how? Give me, give me uh, a way to go on this thing. Mm -hmm. um, two thousand eight rules here. I'm very, very conservative. As far as I'm coming conservative, but uh, I have to consider this today to be an emergency. An emergency. So uh, it came down. Found up to the sky. It was just with five, maybe like half pension. She has workers uh, working for her. So I don't just feel sorry. I agree with you hundred percent. Well, if you, and if you go back to the very b basics about slum and blight, the last thing you need is a burnt out store on Biscayne Boulevard. So, you know, if you, if you really want to go back to basics about slum and blight, this is a perfect example of how we're going to improve a neighborhood, okay? Because I, I'm telling you, I, I was down the other day and coming through uh, parts of, uh, came up 2nd Avenue and North Miami Avenue from downtown, and some of those stores that are burned out, mm -hmm. there's a couple mm -hmm. of them, every other store there looks just terrible because yep. just just the whole idea of being having a burnt out store next to you is just I don't know. Well, okay, and and let me let as me a landlord why would I go and improve my property if everything around me is just deteriorating? Yeah, so if, if you, you go down to our again uh, back to our very back to our very basics of slum and blight this is certainly I want to throw this out to you. Slum and blight and I, I, I if you can go that route fine. But now let's just take a step back here and recollect. We got a slum and blight on Northeast Sixth Avenue and 122nd Street, which was old Dr. Clifflet's office, which was burnt out over 10, 12 years ago. It's still standing there. We gave the gentleman a grant. He didn't. Well, let me finish. He didn't do anything with it. We pulled the grant back. And that building is still standing there. Now, what's to stop him from coming to the CRA and asking for? A measure above our cutoff. Which what, what is it? Eighty thousand that we usually give. Yeah. Okay. What's to stop that? You, uh, you well, just you yeah, just said you got a slum and blight, well, and I agree with you. I I, I, I can see the sensibility, but 
let's pump a little short here. You've got this guy down here for 10, 12 years, longer than that, and that building looks like hell. Well, and it's an entrance it, it, to the city, and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't want Well, I, I think well, one of the things... I'd give him as much as he wanted if he would really do the job. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is not... This is not I, I think the issue, I'm not sure uh, he's bringing up, is the matter of really... Uh, uh, principle and, and, and objectivity in how we proceed with those situations on case-by-case basis. Remember, one of the first points that I make here, I'm trying to say this particular case, because that's what I'm sort of privy to and more aware of, because I don't know what we've done in the past overall. And that's why, as a contingency approval from my standpoint, that we make this requirement. Maybe that's something we can look forward and establish as a policy, retroactively require that they do, because at the end of the day, okay. we have money at risk. That, that we're using the taxpayers' money and we got to do it wisely. Well, you probably, probably legally we can't do it retroactively, okay. but we can certainly look at it going forward. Yes. Those are all things that we can put into the guideline. You can even put in the guidelines that you do not consider disaster fires as part of, of your guidelines. As well, I, I, you know, it is currently not in the guideline. It allows for removing of solvent blight and right. to help and, I, and I think we don't want to put, the, we, we want to be able to legitimately look at every case by case basis. Right. So I think if we start eliminating, oh, we can't do it because it's, no, I don't think, I don't think personally that we would want to go in that direction because we want to review everything case by case basis and she has a legitimate case. Yeah. She's a legitimate business. She's in a very major corridor of our city and Lord knows we want to try and make this came Boulevard as nice as it is and she's always had a wonderful establishment <laughs> clean she you know she's so so we want to try and and help businesses like her as much as we can I think yes sir I have a motion to approve what she's asking for and then we can create rules to prevent barriers to prevent those kind of cases to come to us but let's approve that do we, you want to uh, attach? Well, yeah, with the I, recommendations again, there is a contingency terms. attached to this in terms of the requirement. Go, what, what's to say tomorrow that happens again in uh, a month? Like we said, this is something that's very common, like you said. Or, okay. Mr. Sanchez, or another can business. You right. I'll say another business on well, this game, Bull. Say another business on at the CRA, that one that well, we just gave money to down the street there, uh, Evo's. Yeah. Let's say he goes up in flames tomorrow. Well, that's I, and I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound no, caustic, no, no. but let's say he goes up Mr. and e we're not the fireman's fund, we I are the CRA. Well, no, Kenny, we I, think, I, think I think we have two separate issues, issues. here. We have the issue of insurance, fire insurance going forward, mm -hmm. but we have the issue of her Kim and her current situation. I think that the motion th um, that Mr. Sanchez made with the attachment of the of the Increase contingency the from provide. from Mr. Robillard takes care of the current situation. Mm -hmm. So we have two motions. We, the first motion is that we have to waive the eighty thousand and the equipment. And the equipment. So do I hear a motion to that? Say, any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. The second motion will be your motion, uh, which you are making with Mr. Robillard's contingency as a amendment, correct? Mr. Chairman, wait yeah. a minute. Before you, you've mentioned to us before that the city attorney, uh, our CRA attorney had some briefings and you were going to tell us exactly what, what our communication was. I did. He you said, did. Could you what reiterate was the, that, please? What was the insurance covering? And he had no problem with it. Nope. Okay. Can okay. you, uh, on the I'd like to get that on the record that our attorney had no problem yeah, with that. Yeah, I have the yeah. email yeah. also. The other, the one I just did on the equipment, the mm -hmm. waiver thing, mm -hmm. uh, can someone abstain from that? I want to abstain from that. Okay, one. surely. Yeah. You can, you can, okay. All right, so we have a second motion with an amendment. Um, and do I have a second to that? Second. second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. I have one item. Um, oh. It, it just occurred to me that it, if, 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 if she wasn't here and someone else had bought the space, burned out, and said, I want to redo this, and I'd like a grant from the CRA to assist me in doing this, I think we would jump at the opportunity. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I look at it as if it were a new person coming in mm -hmm. asking for a grant to improve the space. Right. And um, okay. I don't want to penalize her just because she's done such a good job. And 
Right, and so she has done a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, but it's, I, I totally it's agree with all your, all your, all the issues you're bringing up. I, yeah. I agree right. with you. If she was a new person coming in, fine. <laughs> and I understand that. Right. Now, it, it's a two-edged sword. You don't want to penalize them because she did invest her life savings right. into this establishment. Right. It goes up. Do we have an obligation to help her? My heart says yes. <laughs> but I, I like to say, if we have an we next have, we have come obligation forward. to what improve, are we do? To improve. No, and the next guy, we, you know, so I, I how mean, many fires are we covering? We, we yeah. got to make years. sure that. Well, we that's a, that's another how many motion. Fires that we okay. In 11 years? okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much. Now, do we want to make a motion that the CRA board consider requiring that all future grants? Um, no, you Sorry, say, Marsha? No, because that's when the guidelines, that's when we bring you the, the guidelines for review and you can make the recommendations there. Well, maybe we need to include those in future guidelines. Yeah, um, but that's like for <coughs> your attorney to be there because he's the one that's going to okay. help you determine well, those legalities in the can guidelines. We, can we, right. I, I don't know, have a concurrence that, yeah. that, that we need, well, this needs to be reviewed? Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. Right. And we can make that, we, yeah, we can make that as a, a motion of the committee. Sasha, Rasha? I am writing it down. Okay, that we make that a recommendation of the committee that that be reviewed. Uh -huh. Okay? Did that pass through the contingency elements? Right, it did. Hey, wait, wait, Rasha, we, we don't have that now. We, we don't uh, Captain Jim, X amount of dollars. What are covered? We, we know what he has on insurance, or we don't. And, and how often, like the banks, if we got a mortgage, the bank wants to make sure. We have a note on the property, and we are that if anything were to happen, we refi or whatever, the CRA gets covered on it. That's part of the agreement. The property owner knows that. But in terms of insurance, that's different. I, I'm not going into legalities with you. That's for a CRA attorney when this break comes up. But when we make that kind of investment, we put a note on the property and the property own it, owner is aware um, that, you know, let's say if you, somebody, uh, there was an example from a past grantee where they wanted to refinance. They had to come to us for, you know, for the attorney to do something to allow them to do this. Um, so we do have some um, security on the prop on the investment that we've made, whether you're a tenant or a business owner. Okay. Um, is there any other, there's nothing else to come before us? No, this was a special meeting for this yes. one item. So, um, is there any other reports, Roger? Um, briefly, if you have time, uh, the housing, the house bill, uh, went through with some changes, which I, I don't think were like that positive, but, um, one of the things is that they did remove the no new projects, no new debt as of October 1st, 2017. However, they restricted the expenses for CRA, which means, let's say, no more commercial grants, only affordable housing, and anything related to affordable housing can be really? spent. Yes. Um, they've wow. specifically removed everything related. So if you think about our, what we said we were going to do in the na next five to seven years, no parking garage, no downtown, no train station, we can pay for the planning and the surveys. We can pay for the purchase of a land but it has to be towards affordable housing. Affordable housing. Let me just, has the house, has it actually passed the house? Yes, it passed the house. It passed went, the it house? was, uh, the document was that I have was like from Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be in a conference, I believe it's in conference committee. I think so. Yeah, the, where they're so going to try and work out yeah. the, the differences between the house version and, and the, the Senate But, and but the I Senate thought the version. Senate got, the Senate never, never made out of committee. No, it's it's. They still, put it on hold. They put it on hold, which means they get to review it and possibly pass it. And bring it back up. Bring it back up. So um, maybe this, maybe how much time have we got left? Governor Scott is in favor of this, so he's pushing very hard for it. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so okay, Roger. Thank you very much. Thank You're you, welcome. everybody, for coming. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Oh, second. I second. Okay. Listen.